Okay, so this thing just came in. It's got an old kind of beat up case. It's a Les Paul. It's a J. Terzer Les Paul. Let's go through it. Let's put strings on it. Let's shine this baby up. Yeah, so J. Terzer. That's how I pronounce it. I could be wrong. Other guys got different pronunciations. Um, I don't see a serial number on it. But it is set neck construction. Glued in, right? And it's got the humbuckers. And it looks very Les Paul. It does have a little, uh, what do you call this cut right here? A Florentine cut? Let's test this out now. Seems good. Uh, very cheap knobs on here. But uh, it looks good overall. I guess what I'm gonna do is just pull the strings off of here. Looks like the nut has been cut nicely. All right, ding ding, it meant that there's a uh, a customer at the front door so I'll be right back okay I am back I am a one-man operation down here so if I'm back here working on a guitar or making a video or whatever I'm doing uh, if somebody comes in the front door I have to uh, I have to take care of my customers one-man operation but you know what I've had good I've had guitar shop owners come in here and they're like, oh yeah, man, I had a guitar shop, but my employees ruined it for me. My employees would steal from me. My employees this and that. And I'm like, dude, why didn't you just do it yourself then? So, try to learn from the other guys that come in and, you know, learn from other guitar shops' failures, right? There was a guitar shop here in town, and uh, and he had little signs on the wall, little plaques, engraved brass plaques, right, or like gold or something, and it said, "Do not play the guitars, or do not touch the guitars." And so I knew right off the bat, right then, that I was going to be the opposite of that style of guitar shop. I want guys to come in and play the guitars because how are you going to know if you uh, like a guitar or not if you don't play it, right? There's also a guitar shop um, up in Phoenix and they do the same thing. They make you ask to play, can I play that guitar? And then they're like, no, 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 you don't touch that one. Or they stand over you uh, while you're sending their playing it. But I don't know, maybe uh, they have their reasons for doing that, but that's not my style. There could be, uh, maybe there's more theft over at that shop because it is in downtown Phoenix. And I'm more out in the suburbs of uh, Mesa. So uh, maybe it's got something to do with the neighborhood. But I do, I encourage guys to play the guitars. This fretboard looks really dry. So I just put a ton of lemon oil on it. And it could have like polishing compound in it too. That happens a lot of times where, uh, you know, companies, they polish the guitars and the polishing compound gets everywhere. This feels like it has jumbo frets on it. Big tall frets on this thing. Um, this is a, uh, this is a relatively successful brand. J. Terzer, you know, you can see them all over the place. They're actually better than their reputation. Um, I'm guessing, I, I think it's a Washburn product. They're kind of all over the place and they're on the cheap side. 
as far as uh, price. But I think overall they are really, they're a nice guitar for a beginner. They're a nice guitar. Pickups are relatively good. The construction is relatively good. Everything about them are really pretty good. But uh, for some reason, they haven't really caught on to be, even though they've been around for years and years, they never really ended up being, you know, somebody's favorite guitar. Maybe it's because they don't know how to pronounce the name. T-U-R-S-E-R. -E so I'm going to say, Tur I always called it Terger. J. Terger. But this one has the gold hardware. It does have the gold tuners on here. So let me just snug these down. Make sure that everything is tight on the guitar. There we go. That helped. Ooh, that one helped. Yeah, if things are a little loose here and there. Um, it adds to your tuning stability to make sure everything is, is nice and tight. Now, don't over tighten these because there's a plastic washer in there. And if you really over tighten these uh, little screws on the end, you'll snap that washer. Trust me, I know I've done it. So it does help to uh, snug those down tight because it makes them feel quality, right? Makes them feel like a quality product to have them tight. Okay, so what I'm going to do to these frets, just to try to polish them up real nicely, is I've got 1,000 grit sandpaper that I have folded over, and i got my, uh, my uh, fretboard guard. And I'm just going to hit these a couple of times with that sandpaper. And you guys might be able to see how these frets will kind of shine up. So the gold pickups here look really nice. Uh, they're kind of cleaning up okay. Um, but the, uh, the gold hardware here is sort of starting to tarnish a little bit. I don't know, but uh, the gold hardware doesn't look as nice and gold as these pickups do. They're kind of two different shades. But uh, overall, you know, that pickup could probably be lowered a little bit. I think that might be a good idea. And so I always put my fingers right here so I can feel and kind of help it go down a little bit like that. You can feel it, which direction the pickup is moving. So there it is. Lower it a little bit. That feels better. And then when I can put the strings back on, then I can adjust this pickup. But uh, let's get some strings. Today's string choice. Okay, today's strings, I'm going to put on these SIT, Stay In Tune Strings, uh, Power Wound Nickel, S10 through 46 light gauge. So they're 10 through 46. I already opened them up. But uh, yeah, there's uh, three packs, two strings. So we've got our E string and our third string in this pack. And now some of these guys are top wrapping their strings. I'm not gonna do that. I got my Ernie Ball string winder that makes uh, restrings quick and easy. And I can go right ahead, cut that sucker off right there. And then it has the third string, so our G string is next here so now this second pack it's got the a string and it's got two of the b strings so uh, i like these uh sit strings because they give you a couple of extras and uh here in a used guitar shop extra strings is always a good thing because uh, we got a lot of breakage going on from time to time And then we got the B string. A 
Gonna wind this string back up. Come on now. And then roll it over a couple of times like that. And shove it back in here. So I have an extra B string if, if um, some kid in the shop uh, breaks a string while they're playing something. It's not always the kids though. A lot of times it's the mo guys. Okay. So, short scale. Let's check the neck. I'm going to lay it on here like this. Let's see if there is any relief in the neck right here. Okay, because there's just a little bit right there. That's good. Okay. Um, I, I kind of like that right there. It's a little bit of relief. So I'm not going to mess with that. Okay, I am going to raise this side just a little. Because she's a little buzzy. Oh, come on now. Don't mess it all up. There we go. Okay, guys, the next one is part of the video today is an Agile. So she needs new strings on it. The Agile 2000 Les Paul set neck made in Korea. I think it's out of the Samic factory. The serial number starts with an S. Let's get these old strings off of here. Just a basic restring on this one. Damn, these tuners feel tight. Yeah, those things seem super stiff. Sometimes they're just a little bit tight right here. If you over tighten the button, it'll be really stiff. So I'm going to just loosen the buttons a little tiny bit. Just, they're still tight, they're still snug, but just, you know, just a tad. So you can actually turn them. They're that tight. Well, that's better. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm just going to cut the old ones off of here. Now my customer wants a set of tens on here. And he likes the string action where it is currently at. So I'm going to try my best not to change the action. Take a look right there, yeah. It already plays good. Everything about it is nice. Oh, you can see it's fading a little bit right there underneath the uh, tailpiece. It's lighter. So it's been under some lights. Doubt it's been in the sun. It's probably, I don't know where it would get. Maybe fluorescent lights. We're going to hit it with a little furniture polish just to get the dust off of it. Shine up these chrome pickups. This uh, nice looking, uh, nice looking guitar. I mean, if you were on a big stage somewhere, I don't think the average guy would notice that you're not playing a real, authentic Les Paul. Let's put a little bit of lemon oil on the fretboard. It's probably some sort of. Uh, pow ferro wood or some sort of uh, maybe it's a like a uh, I, I don't even know what kind of wood this could be but it's very light the fretboard wood Indian laurel maybe or it's some sort of like pow ferro does have the nice trapezoid inlays and uh, 
they feel really smooth. You can't really feel like where they have been. Uh, they, put, they were installed very nicely. You can't feel them in there. The fret ends feel really nice. Usually nine times out of ten, when you have a binding on your guitar, you don't get much fret sprout. Okay, now let's just wipe off some of the excess there. Yeah, it's looking good. It's ready for strings. Today's string choice. Okay, today's strings are Ernie Ball, regular slinky, 10 through 46. Rip these babies out of here. Okay, let's put them on here. Um, guys, if you're in this far into this video, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate the views. Gives me somebody to talk to. While I'm in here restringing guitars, my band uh, that I play in has been on hiatus all summer long. So that's been a drag. And it's just so hot right now. And I'm in the Phoenix area. And it's so dang hot right now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this end off of here. And then let's take a look at that. How many wraps did we end up with on there? Two, three wraps is all you want around your tuner, the tuner post. You don't wanna wind the string around the tuner, you know, six, eight, 10 times because it looks really sloppy, but not only that, all that string on your tuner, that stuff will stretch too. Yeah, so these Saturday restrings, just something, you know, I string a lot of guitars and I'm just been lately, I just been in the mood to, you know, show you guys almost everything that I work on, everything that I restring. I've just been letting the camera roll lately. So you're gonna see a lot of stuff. Uh, this guitar is just a customer's restring. So uh, some of the guitars that you guys will be seeing, you know, they're they belong to customers, so they're not going to be for sale. Don't call me up and say, hey. I want to buy that uh, Agile that you put new strings on because uh, this, is, this is not my guitar. But you guys, if I do have a guitar and that I mention that is mine and if I mention that it is for sale, you guys can feel free to call me up and tell me what guitar you're interested in. But, uh, may, you know, try to look at the upload date on the video if it's been uh, a couple of months or even a year or two since I uploaded this video then there's most likely a chance that whatever the guitar is it's long gone okay so if something comes up and you know you see something that's come up in the next week or two then you know give me a call I also have been doing a, uh, a whole bunch of from garbage to glitter videos and that's where I take usually it's an old PC rich guitar like a platinum series or maybe a bronze series or something NJ once in a while an NJ series 
and uh, I'll take an old beat up guitar and I'll have it painted. And I have one of those in the works right now too. So keep a uh, eye out for a new BC Rich from garbage to glitter. I, the guitar just came in today. So I have to uh, have a nice quiet day at the store where there's not too many customers coming in to where I can uh, put the whole guitar back together and uh, string it up and get it going again. So yeah, look for some of my From Garbage to Glitter videos because I have a new one coming up. Okay, so you got this guitar pretty close to being in tune. I just lay one hand down here to protect the nut. And we just kind of stretch these strings out a little bit. And you can kind of tug on the low E string and the A string pretty hard. But I mean, uh, once you get down to some of these higher strings, you'll break them if you tug on them too hard. The, the G string, the B string, and especially the E string. You will break those things, so be careful, but tug on your strings a little bit. And again, remember to protect the nut down here, because if you just grab your E string and start, it, it'll just break the nut. And I know that because I've done that. So it's kind of a boneheaded mistake. So you don't want that to happen. And sometimes even up here on the top of the nut, you know, you do the old Iron Man thing a couple of times. And that will help the um, string travel through the nut. And it'll stretch the string out a little bit. So let's see. So we've, we've been able to stretch that. It's showing a D now. So we stretched that E string. Um, we stretched it down a whole full step. Our A string is went about a half a step there. Our D string is showing a C sharp, so yeah, you can really stretch them out. Okay, now, just for the hell of it, guys, I can, uh, in case any of you guys are interested in someday getting an agile guitar, I can, let's see, let's look at the pickup and see what they ohm out at. So make sure your volumes are all the way up. And I just put a cable in the output jack and I get my multimeter out. And uh, let me see if I can put it somewhere where you guys can see that. There we go. So our bridge position looks like it ohms out at Zero, nothing, huh? Oh, had the volume down. Let's try it again. Here we go. It ohms out at 8.19. And so all the way up in the neck position. 7.54 so very very Gibson-ish right that's how I could describe that and we can also look at our fretboard radius and I'm gonna guess it's a 12 inch radius but we can set my radius gauge right here and we can kind of put it in there around those strings and we can look at that and yep to me with my glasses on trying to take a good look at it I'm going to say that is a 12 inch radius neck 
And it's a little harder to get to up in this neighborhood because the strings are in the way. But, uh, yeah. Looks like a 12 inch radius neck on this model. But, uh, there you have it, guys. Quick restring, let's get on to the next guitar. Okay, I got this thing on the bench. This thing got uh, traded in uh, a couple weeks back. And it's a little LTD by ESP, made in Indonesia, IS08. So is that the Samic factory? You guys might be able to let me know. The serial number starts with an IS. Made in Indonesia, is it the Indonesia Samic factory? I don't know, but the strings, you can fill every fret underneath the strings that, uh, these strings really bad. The strings feel big and heavy on them too. So I have to get this thing ready for resale. So the strings are coming off. Just get him out of here. Just get him out. Way too many wraps around the tuner here. Ay ay ay. Yeah, these guys are going to be a little bit tough on me here. They've all been wrapped around a bunch of times. Okay, so this is the kind of thing where somebody wrapped them through. Maybe wrapped them a couple of times and then put them back through. Okay, got to take the back plate off. Back plate's got a little warpage about it. Is it possible that this back plate fit perfectly at one time? And then... Um, and then a trunk, causing the back plate to, um, to bulge. Sometimes I've uh, filed these things down, the back plates, and I've tried to make them a little bit smaller so they fit nice and tight. And being summertime in Arizona, I could probably set this thing on the hood of my truck and it would flatten up out in the sunlight because it's like 109 out today. So if you set it on your uh, the hood of, of my old black Chevy truck, it would probably flatten out. You know, I'm going to do that. Here we go. It's a little test. I'm going to go put it on the hood of my truck and uh, see if, if it comes back an hour or two later if it's flat. Okay, so I just put it out on the roof of my truck. And I can hardly touch the roof of my truck with my hand because it's so hot out there. But you know what? It gives me time to tell you guys a quick story. If I can navigate through my phone here for a second. Look at this guy. So here's a photo of myself. And last Thursday, this gentleman right here came into the store. This is Jack Hughes from Wang Chung. So everybody, Wang Chung tonight came into my store and I sold him a Lawrence Petros LPD pedal. So apparently Wang Chung was playing a show here at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix, Arizona uh, with uh, missing persons and a flock of seagulls and uh, they had like an 80s band reunion kind of show and I'm just showing you a photo in my phone but yeah. Jack Hughes, everybody, Wang Chung tonight. It was pretty cool. It was one of my first uh, rock star sightings as far as having a, uh, you know, a real rock star come into the shop and test out some overdrive pedals. He bought the Lawrence Petros 74 pedal. And he told me he's going to take it around the world. Hey, it's got a nice... Uh, Nice big block in this guitar, which uh, is kind of a surprising 
feature for um, a guitar at this price. Okay, so I got my Music Nomad um, nut files and they're all labeled. So this is the 10. I'm just going to lay this down in front and I'm going to see if I can sort of file this down a tad. Yeah, I kind of think that somebody did the old super glue trick to this, you know, super glue and baking soda because it just looks that color. So anyhow, I'm going to leave that like that for now. And uh, when I get some strings on here, that's when maybe I'll have to, you know, either replace the nut or file that one down a little bit more. If it's already filed down too low, then I'll have to change the nut. So I tested this guitar out when I took it in as a trade-in about a month ago, or maybe it's been two or three weeks ago now, but uh, let's double test the electronics. Three-way switch. Seems good. Yeah, so I've been telling everybody that comes in here that Jack Hughes was in the store. I never thought I'd meet Jack Hughes. I didn't honestly ever even know his name. It was just everybody knows him as Wang Chung, right? You probably would have even thought that was his name, Wang Chung. But they had... Uh, they, of course, had uh, the song Everybody Wang Chung Tonight, which was their biggest hit. But then they had a song called Dance Hall Days that probably charted... I mean, in the 80s, mid-80s, they were a top 40 pop band. But, you know, they had guitars and stuff. Uh, they did the Live and Die in L.A. soundtrack, the movie soundtrack. And apparently there's a really good car scene in that movie. And then they had a song called Let's Go, Let's Go Baby, Let's Go, Come On. They had that song. So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, you get four or five hit songs, and, and I so I can name four hit songs that they had. So, uh, that's a career right there, man. That's a music career. If you can pile on, uh, you know, three hit songs, that's a lifetime music career but even a lot of times you know one hit song you can have a lifetime music career on just one hit song but it's a lot better to have more than that but they were uh, like I said they were playing at the celebrity and I didn't go to the concert but it would have been fun but uh, you know Flock of Seagulls was the uh, headlining band that night and just overall popularity of the of Flock of Seagulls was, I guess, they're just a little bit bigger, bigger than Wang Chung, even though Wang Chung, I think, might have had more songs in the top 40. But uh, I could honestly be wrong about that, too. Flock of Seagulls had Iran and... Um, uh, what well, they had a song, a uh, love song of some sort, that's real popular. I guess they're just the flock of seagulls. Their two or three hit songs were more popular. But you know, you always you have a used guitar shop, and I've been in business for uh, probably about you know at least six years now, going on seven years. And so you wonder, oh, I wonder who's going to come in my shop, and you always hope it's. You know, Joe Bonamassa or somebody. But, uh, the guy from Wang Chung, you know what? I'll take it, man. That's a, that's a good start. That's a good start. And I haven't done any Instagram stuff. I did get the photo with him. And I haven't done an Instagram, uh, thing or Facebook or anything like that. So I'll, I'll do that kind of stuff, you know. Today! Joys. So 
today's string choice. Boy, it cost me a lot of money to have that done. Um, Ernie Ball, regular slinky, 10 through 46. Maybe a little heavier than I like. But this guitar, again, is intended for those guys that want to play heavy. So there's going to be some drop D things going on. Uh, the whole guitar might even be set up a half step down, so E flat. You know what? Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and put it in E flat right off the start. Okay, let's put our attention back on this nut. Now I can see right here that we've got we've got a lot of height between here and the first fret. So I think what I'm going to do Yeah, it's kind of flopping around in there. I'm gonna loosen this string and kind of get it out of the way. Then I'm going to file this thing down a little bit. Okay, let's try and see what happens now. I'm just kind of seeing what happens. I guess that's better. I guess I'll kind of leave it right there and uh, I'm going to tune the guitar up and play it a little bit and kind of see if that nut gives us a problem. And we'll just got to, again, all we can do at this point, or all I want to do is tune it up a little bit and uh, see how it plays. And if it, you know, if it plays really bad, if this is going to give us an issue, then we'll deal with that. Two hours later. I just pulled the pickguard off the, off the truck. Okay, so look at that back plate. It got really flat. So one benefit of the Arizona sun, look at that. I mean, that is, I guess you could say there's one benefit to uh, that Arizona sun beating down on the hood of your truck is it'll flatten out your pick guard real easy. Yeah, it, it worked wonders on this pick guard. Well, it's not a pick guard, it's the back plate, but you guys know what I'm saying. Probably would have worked on a pick guard. That made a big improvement on this thing. Okay, well, there is that. Back plate's on. It's flat. That's what the Arizona sun can do. It'll flatten those babies right up. That thing ain't never coming off of there. Fun guitar to have in your collection, guys. 
if you're a beginner just starting out or if it's something that you want to have laying around just in case you need a backup guitar it's a hardtail it's easy to do drop tunings in this is it man a little LTD thank you guys for watching everybody have a great day and go out and buy yourself a guitar mm -hmm.